Hello everyone and welcome welcome to another explore video. So today we're going to be looking at a deck that's currently being played in the Magic World Championship and that is Teamer Luka Transmogrify. So let's take a closer look at the deck to see what the deck is all about. So this is a deck that I copied over from the championship and more specifically there's four particular players that brought this in for the magic championship but the deck we're going to be taking a look at is going to be from Julian Wellman. I think I like their 75 cars the best. Well technically 95 cars since we're going to be playing Yorion. So having said that what is this deck and what is it about? So the big thing that we're trying to do here is you're trying to get out the Titan of the Industry as early as possible. It's a 7 mana card that comes in as a 7-7 with Reach and Trample. And then you can pick two of these choices, destroy target artifact or enchantment, target player gains 5 life, create a 4-4, or put a shield counter on a creature that you control. So most of the times, you're probably going to be creating a 4-4 and putting a shield counter unless opponent controls an enchantment. Usually in an explorer meta, there's going to be a Fable of the Mirror Breaker on the battlefield. So most of the times you're probably going to be destroying one of those. So at this point, you're probably asking, how do we get this out? In this deck, there's two ways of summoning the Titanum Industry from the deck onto the battlefield. And that is through this card here, Transmogrify. It's a four mana card. You can exile one of your creatures that you control and bring out a creature from your deck onto the battlefield. But the card rips it off the top of your library until you find the next creature to put it onto the battlefield. So you can't just be putting any other random creatures into your deck because if you do, then the chances are you're not going to be able to get the Titan out. So the only creature that you play in this deck is going to be Titanum Industry. And the other means of getting the Titan out is through Luka. Luka is a 5 mana Planeswalker. And in this particular deck, don't really have to worry about the plus one too much. Because most of the times, you're going to be minus twoing for Titan of Industry. Similar to Transmogrify, you minus two and then you target a creature that you control. And you reveal the top of your deck until you find a creature and then you put it onto the battlefield. But the reason why we play Luka in this particular deck instead of something like Indomitable Creativity is because, well, it's kind of hard to cast, first of all. But Luka is a Planeswalker that gives you value every single turn. When it comes down, you can minus two on the spot. And if that misses, you can minus two again to bring out the Titan for the following turn. And that's only possible because Luka does come down with five loyalty. You can minus two consecutively. And on the off chance you do bring the Yorion back onto your hand, you can blink the Luka again to gain the loyalty back up to full. So there's benefits of playing the Luka in the deck, which is basically another copy of Transmogrify. So other than that, we do play a lot of ways of generating a creature onto the board that isn't technically a creature. Because at the end of the day, we do need some creatures so that we can Transmogrify and Luka. So that includes Courier's Briefcase, Careful Cultivation, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Essica's Chariot, the Acrone's War, and the Shark Typhoon. And in particular, Courier's Briefcase and Careful Cultivation allows you to ramp into getting the Transmogrify out on turn 3. Which is going to be pretty important because getting a Titan out on turn 3 versus turn 4 could be a big deal. The Courier's Briefcase lets you sacrifice itself. Not only does it create a 1-1, you can sacrifice itself to add 1 mana of any color. And Careful Cultivation, if you channel this card, you can create a 1-1 green human token with the ability to add 1 mana. So that way you can ramp into getting the Transmogrify down on turn 3. And one other card that is pretty sick in the stack is the Acrone War. It doesn't technically create a creature, but you can steal a card with the Acrone War. And later on, you can sacrifice it to the Transmogrify or the Luka to bring out the Titan of Industry. And at the same time, the Acrone War is kind of a board wipe because the Acrone War forces the opponent to attack with all the creatures that they have. And since we're going to be playing Titanum Industry as our creature, blocking creatures that opponent have is not going to be a problem for us. And later on the stage, we do play the Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Essica's Chariot. And since the copied Titan is a token, Essica's Chariot can copy the token that the Kikijiki made into an actual creature that you control. So those are the little bits of interactions you can expect from the stack on the top end. 
and the rest of the deck are going to be just counter spells and removal spells. As for the sideboard, because this is not my deck, I am kind of a little hazy on what the purpose of each cards do, but I have been watching the championship to understand what each of the cards are for. So Guy Lantern is obviously for greasing matchups. Lazatab Plating is going to be against Rakdos Midrange, Sacrifice decks, etc. that has a lot of targeted removal spells. What's really nice about this card is the fact that it amasses one, which means that you can create a zombie army token, which then later can be sacrificed to Transmogrify or the Luka. Then you got two copies of Mystical Dispute. This is going to be for Mono Blue Spirits, other midrange decks, and control decks. And then two copies of Soul Seer. You want to bring some copies of Soul Seer against Rakdos Midrange in particular, especially if you see that they play more creatures such as Shaldred. And this is also a pretty nice card against Mono Green Aggro as well. And two copies of Ether Guns against Red or Green decks. Two copies of Braid against Sacrifice matchups. And one copy of Fry against Blue matchups. An additional copy of a Chrome War. This is going to be really nice in a mirror match or against other creature matchups. And two copies of a Hornet Queen. This is going to be for aggro matchups, mirror matchups, and Mono Blue Spirits. And against Mono Blue Spirits, you want to actually sideboard out some Titans for the Hornet Queen. And that is because Mono Blue Spirits has a card that can actually tap down your creatures. And if you just have one big fatty on the board, they can just easily tap down that creature and then attack three or defenses. But that is going to be it for the deck. We're going to be jumping into some ranked games in best of three Explorer Q to see how the deck does. And if you guys enjoyed the video so far, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and let's hop on over. Giganta, so probably we can expect, you know, a sacrifice deck maybe um i think we'll keep this one oh that is cool that is very cool just want to see what they play before we uh voltage surge this Harden Scales. That is cool. Play out the Fable. They got themselves a Fable as well. Definitely getting rid of one pathway... ...is probably the way to go. I'm just not sure, like... They want to ditch another land. Probably not. We're gonna need another green source if we want to cast Titan. And then we attack. I do think we just play Essica's Chariot here. Yeah, another Voltage Surge. Citizen Champion.
You know, I could technically sacrifice the Essica's Chariot to kill the Citizen Champion. I, but I think I'll let them draw a card. Because I want them to target it first. So this is an artifact, right? So... And then we'll sacrifice a Chariot. And attack with everything. We'll play the Fable out and hold up a braid for their Fable. Go down up Scald. Okay. Sure. I think we can safely get rid of a spell pierce, right? All right, generous visitor. I think I'm just going to just smack them down for a lot of damage here. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Uh, definitely opponents playing a pretty cool deck with the uh, hardened scales with the uh, generous visitor showdown of scald okay so they're going for the counter plan with generous visitor and citizen champion they can also play leyline binding because they got two triumphs pretty cool deck so their creatures are gonna get big, right? Generous Visitor, things like that. So, a Crown War seems really good. Also, Ether Gust seems extra good because they got Kiki Jikis and Green Cars. Soul Seer. Kind of mid. I think that's it. Lazotep plating could be good. When we do like transmogrify, but we'll have to see. Okay, so... I think we can cut like two spell pierce maybe. And two extra card. Shark Typhoon seems really good. I don't think we're going to be cutting Shark Typhoon because it doesn't look like they have any flyers. Let's see. <clears throat> I'll just, I'll actually just cut the Spell Pierce. Cut a Spell Pierce. And cut a Lazar the Plating. One land. Mulligan. Keep. Let's see. Breeding pool. I think we can cut a Shivan Reef. I think that's the play.
The pawns got fast start. We also got really fast start. So cultivator channel two, make a one one. That can add to that can add a mana. And then we transmogrify. Sure. That is kind of rude though. Until the end of the next turn, you may play those cards. I do need to get rid of that showdown. Crown War. So do I transmogrify? The fact that they got Leyline Binding is really not cool. But I think we're gonna do it anyways. Make a 4-4. Destroy... Jukai Naturalist? I think we're actually just getting rid of Jukai Naturalist here. They don't have a creature down. Everything costs a little bit more. They only have one white source. So... They can't go Jukai Naturalist into Leyland Binding. We also got another Luka out. And if they do play something, we cannot cr a Chrome War. We got a really nice hand here. So they had to do that. Uh, also, I messed up. I needed double red. What am I doing? Okay, let's see what we find. Red. I think we actually keep all those. Those are all good cards. A Crown War is extremely good against their deck. So we attack. And I get I think this game is over. Get the Titan. Create a 4-4. Four, four. Yep. <laughs> because what's about to happen is pretty nasty. We destroy the Leyline Binding. Get back another Titan, and then Titan makes another 4-4, four, four, and destroy the showdown. So that the game was over. Okay, fellow Yorion deck. Um, I'm gonna keep this, even though we don't have a turn 2 play. I think... I think this is still good, because we can go Fable into a Chrome War. Jund? I should have put this at blue to kind of trick them into thinking I have a counter spell. Okay, so looks like we're playing against an enchantment deck again.
So I think what opponent is playing is uh Let me think here. I think I'm only gonna discard the Ketra Triome because I do need No actually I don't. Because I have a I have a treasure token. I was thinking maybe I needed five mana. Hmm. Do I attack? I, I, I don't think so, because they're going to block, right? Then I can't transmogrify. Opponents on the ropes. Leyline Binding. Hmm, I feel like I've seen this before. What? Opponent smart. Opponent's very smart. That is actually probably only way they could have actually stayed alive was by not exiling the Titan of Industry because I can just do it again, right? I think I'm gonna play the Essica's Chariot and pass. I'm gonna wait for the Luka a little bit. So Fire's Invention, a target that definitely I can snipe. Skyclave Apparition. They take the Reflection of Kikijiki. Pretty annoying. So, should I get rid of fires? I think so, right? I think so. War is hell. War surround me. The 4-4 four, four, destroy the fires. And then crew this. I, I get a I get a three three. Even if they double block, I think this is okay. They don't double block. So I only have tight one more Titan left in the deck. One, two. Door. Nice. Um, let me see what this says. When it enters battlefield, okay, when it leaves the battlefield, the exiled car's owner creates a XX. So if I steal with a Kron War and then sacrifice to the Luka. I would get the 3-3, three, three, right? 
At least I think that's how it works. Is there a way I can win here? I don't think so. Or four, destroy, destroy the leyline binding because that we don't want that to bounce with the Theriorion there. Okay, so this matchup. Definitely, I'm not sure. So, Fable, Fires of Invention. But their removal spell is a Leyline Binding. Hmm. Okay, we definitely want Mystical Dispute. Soul Seer. I think we do want Soul Seer. Not sure about a braid. Maybe. E <sighs> How good is Ether Gus? I. I don't know. We'll put one in. I we'll see, we'll see. Um cars that we don't want. A uh, voltage surge. A braid. Two more cards. Two more cards. Mystical Dispute. Soul Seer. Let's go. No, oh, this would have been so good if I had one green source. Do I still keep it? Because we got Fire's Prophecy? I mean, that's only if they play a creature. I think this is a mulligan. Oh god. I mean, we have Omen of Sea. We just need one mana. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. Land. Deck, I want you to work with me. <laughs> I'm so greedy. Oh man. Let's counter that. Seems like counter spell is pretty good against our deck. It's like it seems it does seem like they also have a counter spell. Um yeah, we pass. Why do they have a... F they have an upkeep stop. Is 
They're all on full control right now. Look at that. Why are they doing that? So I can't... In case I want to use a mystical dispute here, I'm just gonna leap, not attack with the human monk. Okay. There you have it.